What is going on guys? In today's video, I will show you the top 3 best longbow builds in Throne and Liberty. So at the start, I will give you a quick overview of each build, then I will explain what skills and upgrades should you focus on. Then as well, we will see what is the best gear and how to get it. And then finally, we will go over the weapon masteries, stats, your skill rotations and even what guardian should you use. So we would be able to get the highest damage possible and much more. So for the first build, we have Longbow and Staff. This setup is a glass cannon that deals huge amount of damage from long range by maximizing our passive and items. You will need to manage your cooldowns effectively, but if you follow the instructions, we will be melting anyone that stands in our way. So let's take a look at our setup. And first off, we have our skills. So for defensive skills, we use Overtaker, while for active skills, I've chosen to go with Serial Firebombs, Judgment Lightning, Ice Spear, Infernal Meteor, Nature's Blessing, Inner Peace, Zephyr's Knock, Strafing, Deadly Marker, Ensnaring Arrow, Decisive Sniping, and High Focus. Because of specialization skills, we'll have Serial Firebombs turn into Focused Firebombs, then Ice Spear will turn into Ice Spear Bombardment, and Infernal Meteor will turn into the Hellfire Rain. And then for passive skills, we get the Rapid Fire Stance, Steady Aim, Sniper Sense, Asceticism, Mana Amp, Flame Condensation, Forbidden Sanctuary, and Roxy's Arrowhead. Next we have Skill Specialization, and for Serial Firebombs, we get the Focused Firebombs, Mobility, and Projectile Speed Increased. Then for Ice Spear, select the Ice Spear Bombardment and Damage Increase. Then for Nature's Blessing, get the Whirlpool. For Zephyr's Knock, get the Damage Increase and Cooldown. For Deadly Marker, get the Bullseye. For Decisive Sniping, get everything besides Decisive Bombardment. For Judgment Lightning, don't select anything. Then for Infernal Meteor, get the Hellfire Rain and Cooldown. For Inner Peace, again, don't select anything. For Strafing, get the Gale and Consecutive Use. Then for Ensnaring Arrow, get the Hit Chance. And finally, for High Focus, get the Base Damage Boost. Next, we have Weapon Mastery, and this is how it should look like for the Longbow. So get the middle first, then the whole bottom row. And then again, this is how it should look like for the Staff. So pretty much the same thing. Get the middle, then the bottom row. Next, take a look at our gear. And all of this, you can easily farm yourself. If you're interested in how to get these items and the full build guide, then click the link in the description to watch my dedicated video on this setup. So first off, we are using the Carnixus Netherbow with Hit Chance, Heavy Attack Chance, and Critical Hit Chance. Next we have Tublex Shattering Quarterstaff with Heavy Attack Chance, Critical Hit Chance, and Hit Chance. Next we have Feathered Drakeskin Mask with Ranged Evasion, Magic Evasion, and Max Health. Next we have Supreme Devotion Cloak with Mana Regen, Skill Damage Resistance and Debuff Duration. Next we have Swirling Essence Robe with Buff Duration, Mana Regen and Melee Evasion. Next we have Gloomguard Gauntlets with added Attack Speed, Mana Regen and Melee Evasion. Next we have Ruthless Enforcer Leggings with Mana Regen, Melee Evasion and Ranged Evasion. Next we have Soul Mirror Boots with Movement Speed, Ranged Evasion and Magic Evasion. Next we have Ecliptic Pendant with Skill Damage Boost, Buff Duration and Mana Region. Next up we have Ancient Sarodama Braces with Skill Damage Resistance, Mana Region and Debuff Duration. Next we have Violent Signet with Buff Duration, Skill Damage Boost and Max Health. Next we have Sapphire Dimensional Band with Buff Duration, Skill Damage Boost and Max Health. And finally we have Belt of the Midnight Hunt with Skill Damage Resistance, Mana Region and Debuff Duration. Next up we have the stats and at the end game we want to get 50 strength and 40 perception and then put the rest of your leftover points into dexterity. Next up is our guardian choice and the best one is the Lady Knight Kamarshia. If you consistently find yourself running out of mana then she's the one for you. And finally we have come to the gameplay. So the highest damage rotation is to use high focus then hellfire rain then nature's blessing then ensnaring arrow then decisive sniping then deadly marker then focused firebombs, then ice spear bombardment, and then we finish it off with judgment lightning. And from here, we rinse and repeat. Also, if you ever run into mana problem, then just use nature's blessing and inner peace skills. And this will give you mana sustain, but it is optional. Like I mentioned at the start, if you want a more in-depth look into this build, then feel free to watch my dedicated bow and staff video. Then for the second build, we have longbow and crossbow. This setup is godlike for PvE as it can dish out a constant barrage of damage. Also, by building up from your skills and passives, you'll get low cooldowns and have a very high amount of hit chance, ensuring that you can keep doing DPS for a very long time. 
So let's take a look at our setup. And for skills in defensive, we use Overtaker. While for active skills, we get Deadly Marker, Selfless Diffusion, Mortal Mark, Blitz, Merciless Barrage, Quick Fire, Mana Exchange, Mother Nature's Protest, Nature's Blessing, Decisive Sniping, Strafing, and Zephyr's Knock. Because of our specialization, the Mortal Mark will turn into Detonation Mark and Merciless Barrage will turn into Wild Barrage. And then for passive skills, we get Rapid Fire Stance, Sniper's Sense, Roxy's Arrowhead, Nature's Power, MB Dexterity, Piercing Strike, Bloodlust, and Eagle Vision. Next we have Skill Specialization, and for Deadly Marker and Selfless Diffusion, we don't select anything. Then for Mortal Mark, get Detonation Mark. For Merciless Barrage, get Wild Barrage and Gale. For Mana Exchange, get Skill Effect Enhanced. Then for Nature's Blessing, select Whirlpool. Then for Strafing, get Gale and Consecutive Use. Then for Blitz, get Cooldown. Then for Quick Fire, get Gale, Minimum Chain Fire and Cooldown. For Mother Nature's Protest, get Lightning Arrow. For Decisive Sniping, select both of these charging times. And now finally, for Zephyr's Knock, get Damage Increase and Cooldown. Next we have Weapon Mastery, and this is how it should look like for the Longbow. So get the middle first and then the whole bottom row. And then again, this is how it should look like for the Crossbow, so pretty much the same thing. Get the middle first and then the bottom row. Next, let's take a look at our gear, and all of this you can easily farm yourself. If you're interested in how to get these items and the full build guide, then click the link in the description to watch my dedicated video on this setup. So, we are using Carnix's Netherbow, with traits like Hit Chance, Heavy Attack Chance, and Critical Hit Chance. Next we have Rex Chimero's Crossbow, with traits like Hit Chance, Heavy Attack Chance, and Added Attack Speed. Next we have Divine Justicier Mask, with Mana Regen, Magic Evasion, and Cooldown Speed. Next we have Supreme Devotion, with Mana Regen, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. Next we have Shadow Harvester Tunic, with Mana Regen, Ranged Evasion, and Buff Duration. Next we have Shadow Harvester Grips with Max Mana, Mana Region, and Range Division. Next we have Elusive Hex Weaver Pants with Mana Region, Magic Evasion, and Debuff Duration. Next we have Sabatons of the Field General with Max Mana, Range Division, and Movement Speed. Next up we have Class of the Conqueror with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. Next we have Braces of the Primal King with Max Health, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. Next we have the Violent Signet with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. Next we have Amber Dimensional Band with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. And finally we have Belt of the Midnight Hunt with Max Mana, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. Next up we have the Stats, and at the end game we want to get 50 Strength, 50 Dexterity, and 40 Perception. Next we have our Guardian Choice, and the best one is the Shade Revenant Steno. This guy synergizes very well with our build because his projectiles that hit enemies will proc our Mother Nature's protest skill, so he will increase our damage by a massive amount. And now finally, we have come to the gameplay. So the highest damage rotation is to use the Deadly Marker, then Selfless Diffusion, then Nature's Blessing, then Detonation Mark, then Wild Barrage, then Blitz, then Decisive Sniping, then Quick Fire, then Detonation Mark again, then Zephyr's Knock, then Quick Fire again, then Strafing, and now we finish it off with the Zephyr's Knock. Like I keep mentioning, if you're looking for a more in-depth look into this build, then feel free to watch my dedicated bow and crossbow video. And now finally, for the last build, we have the Longbow and Dagger. In this setup, the Longbow provides high single-target DPS at range, while the Dagger provides amazing passives. This build has really good self-sustain and high single-target DPS, but you're very reliant on cooldown speed, so you'll want to make your build around reducing as much waiting time as possible. But if you follow instructions and build it right, then you'll become unstoppable. So let's take a look at our setup. And for defensive skills, we use the Block Blade, while for active skills, we get the Zephyr's Knock, Ensnaring Arrow, Decisive Sniping, Strafing, Nature's Blessing, Deadly Marker, Inject Venom, Shadow Strife, Ankle Strife, Brutal Incision, Blitz, and Camouflage Cloak. Because of our specialization, our Inject Venom will turn into Lightning Infusion, then Shadow Strike will turn into Shadow Escape, and Brutal Incision will turn into Thunderclouds Bombing. And then, for our passive skills, we get Rapid Fire Stance, Steady Aim, Sniper's Sense, Assassin's Instincts, Destructive Fang, Wrathful Edge, Roxy's Arrowhead, and Murderous Energy. Next we have Skill Specialization, and for Zephyr's Knock, we want to select Damage Increase and Cooldown. For Decisive Sniping, get Charging Time, Damage Increase, and Second Charging Time and Mobility. For Nature's Blessing, get Whirlpool. Then for Inject Venom, select Lightning Infusion and Cooldown Reduction. For Ankle Strike, get Offhand Weapon Activation. For Blitz and Camouflage Cloak, don't get anything. Then for Ensnaring Arrow, get Hit Chance. 
Then for strafing, select Gale and consecutive use. For deadly marker, don't get anything. For shadow strike, get shadow escape and skill distance increased. And finally, for brutal incision, get thunderclouds bombing. Next we have weapon mastery, and this is how it should look like for the longbow. So get the middle first, then the whole bottom row. And again, this is how it should look like for the dagger, so pretty much the same thing. Get the middle first, and then the bottom row. Next, let's take a look at our gear. And all of this you can easily farm yourself. If you're interested in how to get these items and the full build guide, then click the link in the description to watch my dedicated video on this setup. So first off, we are using the Carnixus Nether Bow with traits like Hit Chance, Heavy Attack Chance, and Critical Hit Chance. Next, we have Liquirus's Wicked Thorns with traits like Hit Chance, Heavy Attack Chance, and Critical Hit Chance. Next, we have Divine Justiciar Mask with Mana Regen, Melee Evasion, and Cooldown Speed. Next, we have Supreme Devotion with Mana Regen, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. Next, we have Shadow Harvester Tunic with Mana Regen, Ranged Evasion, and Buff Duration. Next, we have Shadow Harvester Grips with Mana Regen, Magic Evasion, and Ranged Evasion. Next, we have Alacritus Invoker Pants with Mana Regen, Magic Evasion, and Melee Evasion. Next, we have Sabatons of the Field General with Melee Evasion, Ranged Evasion, and Movement Speed. Next up, we have Clasp of the Conqueror with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. Next, we have Braces of the Primal King with Max Health, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. Next, we have the Violent Signet with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. Next, we have Sapphire Dimensional Band with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. And finally, we have the Belt of Endless Slaughter with Max Health, Skill Damage Resistance, and Buff Duration. Next up, we have the Stats, and at the end game, we want to get 50 Strength and 40 Perception, and then put the rest of your leftover points into Dexterity. Next, we have our Guardian Choice, and the best one is the Shade Revenant Steno. This Guardian launches projectiles every second that can crit and heavy attack. Since our build is great at both close range and long range, so this guy works perfectly with our playstyle. And now finally we have come to the gameplay. And as this build is very versatile, so I'll give you two different rotations. So in the first one we use Nature's Blessing, then Ensnaring Arrow, then Camouflage Cloak, then Decisive Sniping, then Blitz, and now we finish it off with one more Decisive Sniping. And for the second rotation, we this time start by using Lightning Infusion, then Deadly Marker, then we activate Strafing twice, then now Zephyr's Knock, then Strafing for the third time, then Shadow Escape, then now Lightning Infusion for the second time, then Ankle Strike, then Thunderclouds Bombing, then Shadow Escape for the second time, and then we finish it off with Zephyr's Knock. And from here, we just rinse and repeat. And that's about it. So if you enjoyed this video, click like, subscribe, and comment. If you're interested in more content, then check out my channel and I'll see you in the next one. So take it easy, peace.